So Super Mario 3D World is coming to the Nintendo Switch, but it's not coming alone. Because at the end of the logo, they've added a plus sign. And not just that, Triss. But, <laughs> a Bowser's Fury logo, which we'll see in a few moments here as it flies through this strange new world. So, yeah, we're back here to do a real-time analysis on everything we can see in this trailer. And as you may have guessed, I'm joined by my good friend Triss from Source Gaming. So how's it going, Triss? Pretty good. Really busy with all this new Mario. Info. Tell me about it, jeez. So, Tris, I'm happy to have you here because you have done quite a few in-depth analysis yourself, and I thought it'd be good for us to bounce some ideas off each other as we go through what Bowser's Theory exactly is. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be here. So, this is a very unusual, um, seeming expansion to the game. Like, we don't, Nintendo was very light on the details, merely showing off this strange new world that takes place, obviously, during a stormy night. There's lightning in the background which might possibly tie into the final level of Super Mario 3D World, which I think also took place during a storm, um, which makes mm -hmm. sense given the Bowser focus. And the camera seems to be going through this fairly broad environment as it focuses on this weird statue thing with what appears to be a spiked cat bell covering uh, its head or part of it or whatever <laughs> this thing is. So what do you make of this so far, Triss? So, I think it's interesting that, uh, of this whole area where we see a lot of, like, repeats of objects, like the lighthouses on the right, we see this Sphinx statue. Right. But, or almost Sphinx statue, because whatever its head actually is, is covered by this black spiky, what appears to be like a sealed super bell. Mm -hmm. With its eyes closed, it looks sad or sealed. Although, despite being a super bell, it has the, the ears and some sort of little nub on top of it. I'm not sure what that is, but... Yeah, you can almost, if you look below the, the covering, which it does seem to be a covering, you can see the, mm -hmm. the rim of whatever's underneath. And that almost does seem to have a Super Bell appearance itself. So this, is this one Super Bell on top of another? The Spike Super Bell on top of a standard <laughs> one? And, is in, and does that imply that the original, that, that, a, that there's a creature, perhaps, that is a legged Super Bell? <laughs> I think that'd be the most terrifying way to get a power up in Mario yet. Um, that would be, yes, absolutely. But I think that I think <laughs> I, I might. This might also just be like a collar or something around a cat head, perhaps. Mm -hmm. To lending itself to the Sphinx idea you were suggesting. Yeah, almost like the the Sphinx is an Odyssey. Right. So yeah, exactly, kind of like that. So I'm not quite sure what direction they're going with here with this exactly. Whether it's a Super Bell or like a Sphinx cat thing. Um, but it does appear to me that these coverings are going to be a central part of this game, I assume, um, with mm -hmm. this, you know, with this uh, statue being a particular significance. So do you think maybe Bowser planted these uh, spike bells? Which, by the way, I should point out, those spikes match up perfectly with the spikes in the logo of Bowser's Fury, which pretty much seals the connection, I think, to yeah. Bowser directly. So he's yeah, covering I these. Think so. so he seems to be covering these for some kind of purpose. Like, is it to limit their power? I mean, we see Cat Mario here in front, so it hasn't limited the, the cat power ability entirely, of course. But yeah, do you think maybe it's limited the amount of bells, perhaps? Or something in this world that involves these cat statues? Like, maybe these are some form of collectible or something you need to clear out in order to complete this new adventure? I definitely think it would be a matter of, like, rescuing them, almost like the, the origins of the Super Bell. Because right. we never really know how the Super Bell came about in... 3D world where it got sent everywhere and then Bowser himself even had one so maybe we'll see him uh this is how he unlocked the power used it for himself etc that very well could be that would be really interesting get more of a backstory into this power up which we never hasn't ever really been explored and which also might be why that may not be what it is but that would be very interesting <laughs> they actually lean in a little bit more into the lore side of Mario and kind of like yeah. explain some of this stuff now, regardless of whether you know, regardless of whatever is happening here, there is a there is a significant focus on cats. Now, that's always been the case, but they're taking it to a bit of an extreme here. So let's go through everything that we found so far. So first off, there are cat statues um, or cat like you know cat engravings on the uh, structures in the background. There are multiple of them, as you can see there. Uh, they're these, definitely not as cartoony looking either. These look not. more like they might tie into the potential like Sphinx statue. Right. I mean, they, they look almost Egyptian in nature. Beyond right. that, the uh, lighthouses you mentioned earlier, which I believe you said there are three, also have cat ears. There are these gates that have... Let me zoom out a little bit here. There are these gates that have cat ears on them now as well. And there's um, a lot of these gates too. There are multiple They're all gates. over the place. They're, yeah, so we'll get into that in just a second. Um, there are there are trees all over that also have cat ears on them, as you can see here. Uh, and get this, 
The bushes also have cat ears, and look, trust, if you zoom in all the way here, uh, while these little tiny plants don't have cat ears on them, they are little cat paw plants, which is kind of adorable. <laughs> I think what's what's most disturbing about those though is they're in groups of three, not four. What happened to the fourth paw, the cat? That is very disturbing. <laughs> Good point. I don't want to know. Finally, Triss, the clouds also have cat ears on them. So this is. I think that's my favorite touch. That is a pretty great one. Um. So yeah, there's a, there's something very, very odd about this whole realm, and that's and we haven't even touched on just kind of the scope of this in that this is big. Um, we can see mm -hmm. there are conventional level elements, and I wonder if maybe the seemingly size of this is only is partially due to the cinematic camera we have here. Because right here we can already see what might be a conventional path through the level. You have the gate, you follow the path up here, you would um, you know jump through the uh, pass to the spinning platforms, which we can mm -hmm. see rotating back here. And a this bit. is exactly how we know it's it's a level. It's not like a world map or like an overworld area. Right. Because of this like actual level layout that it has, where you can almost trace a path through it. Yeah, in fact, let's go and trace that real quick. So we'll follow the path up here. You got the spinning mm -hmm. gates. It seems you can jump up here, but there also appears to be a platform this way too, which appears to be maybe have a door in front of it. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if there's something you can go inside the mountain with or what. Well, g given um, with 3D World and the fact that it's the cat suit power up, I would imagine that would be where they hide something if you go to like jump into there. Mm -hmm. Maybe like the camera won't normally show you that high up, so if you jump into there, you'll get something special revealed, like the the green stars or whatever collectible they have for this edition. That's a good one. Yeah, that could be. Um, it appears that in, in any case, you'll be able to eventually climb up to this area. We can see a fence and tons of trees up there, so mm -hmm. definitely seems to be. There might be something of interest up there, I wonder, perhaps. You'll drop down here, cross a few more platforms, and you'll reach the first lighthouse, I believe. Um, and yep. I don't know what those are for yet. Uh, and, and, and now this is the part that's interesting, right? Like, are you forced along here, or could you just head straight to the hub, or not hub, but to the center part of the area? Because where do you mm -hmm. go from the lighthouse? Do you just drop off at this point? Do the lighthouses act as teleports perhaps do you need to activate them like what's going on there i think because it's a dark stormy night i think it's a matter of you have to go turn on all the lighthouses right that would make sense so we can see the second lighthouse right over here along with the third one over here so i'm thinking that this 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 might be a fairly non-linear level like this might be more open than any 3d world level has been up to this point the only <laughs> comparison true. i can think of is the, the savannah level where you define the rabbits but that was a that was a completely flat and featureless environment. This one has right. a, a lot more detail, so I wonder if they're making use of the extra hardware power of the Switch to kind of broaden the scope of what 3D World can be. So um, it seems like you may be able to, like, once you reach this bell, um, or this, I mean, it seems like this shrine, or not shrine, uh, but I, I, I keep thinking shrines, like, along Breath of the Wild. <laughs> but um, this, this statue, this uh, Sphinx, might be like the central area of this level, because beyond it we can see even more, including another lighthouse, which, uh, in order to get to it, you need to go through quite a trial, it appears. So, um, back up really quick, yeah. for the, the second and third lighthouse, do mm -hmm. they point in different directions? Oh, that's a great question. They do! They do! I think you have to turn all of them on, and then they'll point at the statue and get rid of the, the kind of the dark seal on it. That could be. I'm trying to see. We can't really quite yeah, see where the first lighthouse aims, unless we look at the windows, which yeah, suggests it might be pointing away from it. It might be in that case. But the second and third one look like they kind of point, or yeah. could have, like, if you shine a light in them, could point out towards it. That's a really interesting idea, and that actually reminds me of another game we analyzed recently, being Paper Mario the Origami <laughs> yeah, Paper King, Mario. <laughs> which had the desert where you had, to, you had to turn the towers onto a central area in order to reveal a secret. So... This may not be too far removed, so maybe you're onto something there, Triss. So yeah, in order to get to that third lighthouse, we can see you'll probably have to explore this area. Um, there's, mm -hmm. a few, there's a platform that's going up and down. A few platforms that are going up and down. I assume you'll be able to reach this. Maybe you, you, you'll use that to cross over here. Um, there's another bridge that extends and uh, retracts, and then you can eventually work your way to that third lighthouse. Um, and we can also see some more stuff back here, too. If you look through the gate on the left, it looks like there's some sort of lock on the wall back there. Either a lock or... Because it doesn't look like a question mark to me. That thing right there, right? Yeah. I, at first, I thought it might be like a locked warp box, yeah. but those tend to be gray. I, I thought it might be a sign at first, but it does look like it's maybe connected to that wall or something. So, yeah, maybe it is a lock. It's hard to tell what that is exactly. Yeah. 
That's a good point, though. It does, yeah. We can see, we can actually see it kind of pop into view here, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like, is that a wall, a door then, perhaps? It's, I think it's either a door with a lock, or, or, or wait, I think it's a sign with an up arrow. So it might be actually telling you Oh, it's pointing you to go it's up, kind of okay. Armor. Yeah, that, that, there we go, that would make sense in how you climb up there. So, I, I mean, so I am thinking that this, this is going to be the most, that this adventure, perhaps, may be more, or less linear than, again, anything we've seen in 3D World. But what's your kind of mm -hmm. overall take on what we're seeing so far? So I think it's definitely interesting. This, this world layout, this, this level layout, is definitely one of the more complex ones we see right. from 3D World. But that makes me wonder when this is. Is this right. in between the final Bowser fight and then, like, the special worlds? Or is this your next challenge after finishing Champion's Road from the original game? That's a good one. I mean, I'm assuming it'll probably be like the Mario and Luigi expansions where where uh, it'll be accessible at any time, but that doesn't tell us oh, where the true. story takes place. Um, in those games, the story took place concurrently, but since we can see Mario here, that doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily... I mean, that suggests that this, has, that this probably would be a sequel, I would think. Because... Um, we see them first arrive to this kingdom in 3D World at the beginning. The, 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 the Sprixies yeah. or the princesses are like, hey, you know, we need help, we've been kidnapped, whatever. We see Bowser actually kidnapped, and as far as we can tell, this is Mario's first time in this land. That may not be the case. They can change Mario lore whenever they want. So yeah, I am thinking this would be this would have to be a post-story type thing, even if it is available at any point. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do think this would take place after, especially given the thematic connection of the weather and everything. It just feels like this is something that's going to be happening after the events of 3D World. So Bowser's probably yeah. very upset at this point. <laughs> that's that's definitely true. And I, I like that you mentioned the, the Mario and Luigi expansions because th this title is just as much of a mouthful as those recent remakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Super, Super Mario 3D uh, World plus Bowser's Fury. Yeah, and, th and that's the full title. That's not saying it's an expansion to the game. That's, that right there is the full title of the Switch release. Right. Just yeah. as much of a mouthful as Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. It really is. <laughs> um, I'm looking into the background. There also appears to be these just kind of triangle, triangular-shaped mountains. I don't know if there's any super important details there, but they do just look a little imposing, which again possibly mm -hmm. supports the idea that this is a Bowser-focused area, you know? And it gets back to the point... Or, and I guess also there's those weird cat gates. What do you think those indicate? Do they... Do anything? Are they just there to frame a path? I almost wonder because there's only really like what two question mark blocks that we see around here. Yeah, there's one right that, here. That, that, that first one probably gives you a cat bell, but right. I wonder, or a super bell. I wonder if passing through the gates, almost like the the flags, making you a super like super, uh, giving you a super mushroom. Mm -hmm. I wonder if passing through the gates will automatically give you the cat bell or the super bell if you don't have it. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, I hadn't hadn't occurred that hadn't occurred to me. Um, maybe, I, I do wonder if, yeah, I mean, it, it, if Bowser's, like, you know, if Bowser's gonna rid the cat power-up somehow, maybe that's how, the only way to get them is going mm -hmm. through those gates. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what, else, what the purpose the gates could serve. Like, maybe they activate something, maybe you have to activate all the gates, maybe they're tied to the lighthouses in some way. They don't seem to be powered in any way. Th but... They otherwise seem like they just kind of mark the path leading to the lighthouses from... Well, not not necessarily from the statue, because the first one almost looks like the spawn of the level. Right. And then this other one you see on the right is kind of in the middle of an island. Mm -hmm. It leads to the one on the right, but it looks kind of separate. Right. Well, speaking of separate, too, like, we can see, like, there's these own, you know, there are these... There are, like, multiple islands here, um, mm -hmm. which, again, suggests, like, even though we can see, like, a clear path, it seems like you may, you may not be limited to it. There's an area that even exists before that path. And I'm yep. getting almost more Mario Odyssey vibes in some ways. Like I'm specific, specifically reminded of the desert level in that game, in which yeah. there was a path through the ruins, but you obviously didn't have to stick to it. You could go about it in any manner. Um, but that would suggest a pretty big overhaul for how this for how this game works. Because you had, I don't think you had any camera control, or if you did minimal camera control in the original game, right. where you were basically where the camera basically directed where you would go. So do you think that may no longer be the case? So we may have like more full or camera control here? I think it'd be interesting if we did have full camera control, but I almost feel like the way these different sections are laid out, uh, I, I almost feel like you would the, the camera would naturally move along them because I can almost see from the layout of these levels what the camera positioning would be. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And I almost feel like, especially if the gates were like the entrance to those areas, like maybe 
after you beat one of the lighthouses, it like launches you like a launch star to the next one. That I mean that's entirely possible, but I see this um the spinning gate here in the wall, and I'm like that looks out of place, doesn't it? Oh, like, that is true. There has to be some way to reach that. So, so if you if we go to the very very beginning, we see what at, at first I thought might be like the edge of the world for some reason where we see the water, but I oh, think that's point. actually shallow water. So right. we can actually run in all this, I think. I think uh, that's a great point because we can see the deeper, darker water here. Yep. Um, which probably acts as either a barrier or something that would yep. you know, possibly kill you if you try to swim in it. Um, so th and and yeah, I, so that's a really good point. This this entire area might be fully uh, fully accessible to you as a as mm -hmm. a player. Um, and especially although, if you, especially if you look at the fact that the platforming elements are only around the paths leading to the lighthouses, right? So that kind of makes sense. Of it's free form, but you still have to do traditional 3D world platforming to actually get to your goals, right? Um, and to that point, like we can see that although you maybe will see this lighthouse, like we already established, you're going to have to take a long path to get there because. Uh, yep. These structures appear to be largely in ruins. Like, these support beams are missing in some cases. Yes. Yeah. Which, is this because of Bowser? Is it just because they're ancient? Um, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. So, maybe yeah, this is like a. Uh, maybe <laughs> this is a. Uh, like, the civilization has been wiped out by Bowser entirely. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of dark after everything with the Sprixies. Wouldn't it? Right? <laughs> um, I do love the reflections too here, by the way. You can see the tree reflecting in the water, which is a nice That is touch. nice. The, the, the water does look nice, which is very consistent in recent Mario games. I mean, with Mario Sunshine coming back, they gotta step it up, right? <laughs> uh, we can even that see like, how the uh, everything seems to have like reflective sheen to it, like the trees as well, and mm -hmm. I think even the statue here. Of course, there's water raining down the camera as well. Um, so yeah, this this looks visually beautiful. Like 3D World also already wasn't any slouch, but this definitely seems to be taking it a step beyond. Yeah, definitely. So I think that pretty much covers it for Bowser's Fury, but Tris, do you have any notes uh, that you took for the main 3D World game as well? Um, we saw from uh, Twitter, uh, Push Dustin actually uh, translated something from, I believe he translated from the website or made a note, but uh, the movement speed has been increased. Right, we know that, right. And the, and the climbing and flight times have also been changed, meaning this game plays differently than originally. I Which love that. I, I always felt the game was a little bit sluggish, so I think this mm -hmm. will definitely enhance the uh, the playability of it. So yeah, definitely, it should be really nice. And not only that, Tris, but they're actually adding a new move to the game. As one of our Twitter followers, uh, Kiki Lord, pointed out, you can now dive in the game, which leads right into a roll, most like Mario Odyssey. You could roll in the original 3D world, but it was super slow because you had to crouch first, then roll. But now we can see you can dive right into one. So that is pretty darn cool. And again, speaks to how much they're speeding up this game. The other big thing, which for some reason Nintendo of America is very slyly not mentioning, but Nintendo Europe was all over, there's online multiplayer in online this version of the game. That's right. I am super excited for that because this is something I didn't wasn't able to play a whole lot with in multiplayer. Just right. because it's a pain, especially as an adult, to get your friends together constantly. <laughs> um, so having this be available online is going to be great. Oh yeah, that, that that's going to be fantastic, and I can mm -hmm. see like really great gaming sessions with this with just a fun group of people. Because th this is one of the best multiplayer Mario experiences, in my opinion. So yeah. to really broaden that and allow it uh, to have online, that's just even better. It's definitely a step up from the 2D games, I find, which are more more annoying to play sometimes in multiplayer uh, than not. <laughs> so I'm definitely looking forward to having 3D World um, uh, more accessible to online. And I just hope it works better than Mario Maker 2. So. Oh, hopefully, hopefully. I imagine if, it, if it's like a, with friends only, it should, as long as it allows friends, unlike, right. unlike Mario Maker 2. The, the only two other things I have for my notes here is, for some reason, um, though it wasn't announced in the actual trailer or in the direct, um, they're making a Cat Mario and Cat Peach amiibo. Yeah, that's a surprise. And that just makes you wonder, how much are they actually adding to this game if they're now also adding amiibo support? That's what is question. the amiibo support? What are they going to do? It's it's insane. There's and I, Especially since, as of late, We've only really been getting Smash Ultimate Amiibo. There hasn't been non-Smash Amiibo in, I, I want to say, at least a year now, I think. So right. this feels weird to suddenly get that. I think you're right. 
Um, and then the only other thing I noted was, uh, from the normal trailer, we can see stamps are still in the game, despite not functioning with Miiverse anymore. So what despite, do they do? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I imagine they're just, they just function as just the collectible. I don't think you can use them as stamps in any sort of social media posting anymore. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, actually, it would be kind of neat if there was, like, a photo editor before posting it to social media or something, where you can use the stamps or something, but... I found it interesting that they kept that where uh, other Wii U ports outright removed them. So yeah, that's kind of fun to see. I mean, they were a pretty key. I mean, pretty fun collectible to grab. So I guess they had to retain them in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I am just curious to see what capacity they're going to be made use of because yeah, the whole point is them that you could use them in messages on Miiverse. Yeah. And uh, obviously that's no longer a thing. A couple more things I noticed while you were talking. There seems yep. to be something, some kind of odd-looking platform or part of the ground here. Do you see that, like, tan-looking thing? Oh, yeah. So, it seems to... I don't think we see anything else quite like that anywhere else. It's, um... It might... It could just be, like, something of this, like a rim of a platform. So it's mm -hmm. probably nothing too important. But then, also, I was looking again at this structure here that goes down. I'm, I'm wondering, is that a slide? Maybe you slide down this thing? Um, it definitely looks more like a slide. It looks like you kind of can't come back after going right. down that. Uh, yeah, so that so maybe you have to drop off after reaching the lighthouse. Or maybe it is a staircase and you can just climb your way back and backtrack your way through here. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there's I wonder if there's how much more there is beyond this wall that we can't see. Or if this is it. If we are really seeing the entirety of the level and it all revolves around removing this spiked cat bell uh, somehow or super bell some way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and revealing what's underneath. And is that something you can then enter? Is that maybe a shrine, as I was saying earlier? <laughs> maybe this Sphinx has an open mouth you can crawl into? Who knows? Well, I think that's a good question, because where's the flagpole if we see most right. of this level? <laughs> good point! There is no end goal. And again, as far as we can tell, and again, that supports the idea of this being a non-linear level. Like, this yep. may be essentially the flagpole. This is what we're trying to get at. And in order to do so, we need to clear everything else out. Um, makes you think. Yeah, really. Uh, real quick, final thoughts. How exactly do you think Bowser might be incorporated here? Obviously, he has, a, he has some kind of focus. He's mad based on the title. <laughs> do you think we may? Do you think there's a chance we'll play as him, or do you think he may take a more active role in the levels, maybe chasing you through them at points? Do you have any thoughts or expectations for Bowser? Um, I think most of what we may see as Bowser is we might see. Uh, at least one more boss fight with him that specifically uses the cat suit, so we might right. see the return of Meowser again. Not oh, for just sure, that's a guarantee. Final fight. Yeah, uh, we'll probably see more using that, so maybe we'll find more interesting boss battles that isn't simply running from him than using the pal block. Right, it might actually involve fighting him. Yeah, I hope so. That that it was a little bit of a letdown. Like it was a fun escape sequence essentially in the original game, but it didn't feel like much of a battle. So right, they really could step that up, particularly if they had these more open environments. That could really change how you make use of the cat suit, which is definitely, which is pretty much one of Mario's most versatile powers to date, where yeah. you can scale different, you know, buildings, different structures, and I could see them going all out with a crazy open-ended battle against Bowser in a large environment <laughs> that uh, might be more befitting of a game like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so this really I, I has think, me excited. I think as long as the boss battles are on par with like. Hissocrat and Motley Boss Blob, like the other like kind of big bosses they have mm -hmm. you fight throughout the game, in terms of like the arena and actually fighting them. Right. I think it could definitely be pretty neat. I I'm pretty so. excited for this. Yep, I'm stoked for this. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, Tris, I think that's everything. So, thank you for joining me for this analysis. And uh, where can people find you at if they want more content from yourself? So people can find me over at Source Gaming, where I cover tons of Mario things. That's like pretty much all the same level of uh, Paper Mario content you specifically did. I basically did uh, same level of a lot of it. Um, I also stream on Twitch and can be found on Twitter at Toontris if you don't want to find me at Source Gaming for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You can find links to all that in the description below. And with that, thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, make sure to click the subscribe button and ring that bell, that super bell, for tons more on <laughs> Super Mario 3D World and plus Bowser's Fury and everything else on the Mario 35th anniversary direct as well. We'll catch you later. Bye everyone. <laughs>